PS4 generation was probably the best of all. We got one of the best games with amazing visuals. Now, even though PS5 is better in some aspects, it still doesn't have many games yet, even almost five years after its release. So in this video, I am going to be talking about 20 best PS4 games you should play. Let's look at the first game on our list. Detroit Become Human. Alright, if you haven't dived into Detroit Become Human yet, what are you doing? This game is a narrative-driven masterpiece that feels more like a playable movie than just a video game. Developed by Quantic Dream, it throws you headfirst into a futuristic world where androids are practically indistinguishable from humans, but society treats them like disposable tools. What really sets this one apart is the sheer weight of your decisions. Every single choice, no matter how small, branches the story into completely different paths and the stakes. Oh man, they get intense. You switch between three characters, a high-tech detective android, a domestic android fighting for freedom, and one who takes on the role of a revolutionary leader. Each one's story intertwines in crazy ways depending on what you choose. Will you be peaceful or violent? Will you sacrifice others or yourself? It's a roller coaster of emotions, and it doesn't hold back. The writing hits hard with themes of identity, freedom, and morality. The kind of stuff that makes you sit back and think, what would I do? And even though it came out back in 2018, the visuals still slap. I mean, they hold up against a lot of PS5 games today. The facial animations, they're borderline creepy in how realistic they are, making every emotional moment land just right. The PS4 pushes itself hard with this one, and it shows whether it's the rain-soaked streets of futuristic Detroit or the intimate, heart-wrenching close-ups during key decisions. Forget waiting for the next-gen upgrade, this PS4 gem already feels way ahead of its time. If you skipped it or just haven't gotten around to it yet, Detroit Become Human is an experience you won't want to miss. And hey, it's the perfect example of how powerful storytelling can trump even the latest graphics upgrades. Ghost of Tsushima Man, Ghost of Tsushima is something else. It's not just a game, it's an experience. Imagine standing on top of a windy hill, your samurai armor clinking with cherry blossoms blowing all around you. Yeah, this game feels like poetry in motion. Sucker Punch absolutely nailed it with this one, and it's wild to think it's a PS4 title because it plays and looks better than half the stuff coming out today on PS5. You step into the sandals of Jin Sakai, a samurai caught between tradition and survival during the Mongol invasion of Tsushima. What makes it so special is how Jin's journey isn't just about fighting invaders, it's about figuring out who he really is. Do you stick to the honorable path of the samurai, or do you embrace the way of the ghost sneaky, dirty, but damn effective? Every fight, every ambush, every quiet stare at the horizon makes you question what it means to do the right thing when the rules of honor don't seem to apply anymore. The combat is chef's kiss good, it's got that perfect balance simple to learn but hard to master. A duel can turn into a dance of blades where every parry, every dodge feels like life or death. And those standoff moments, unreal, there's something deeply satisfying about sizing up a bunch of enemies, waiting for just the right moment to draw your sword, and then dropping them in one smooth strike. And let's talk about the visuals. This is the kind of game you pause just to take screenshots every frame looks like it belongs on a wall. Whether you're riding through a dense bamboo forest or watching the ocean slam against rocky cliffs, it's breathtaking. The game respects your time too, it doesn't flood you with unnecessary busy work. Instead, every side quest, every collectible has a story behind it, making exploration feel meaningful rather than obligatory. Honestly, Ghost of Tsushima doesn't just show what the PS4 was capable of it shows what open world games should strive for. Beautiful, immersive, and with just the right amount of depth without becoming overwhelming. This isn't one of those maybe I'll get around to it games, this is a must play. If you haven't tried it yet, don't sleep on it because this one will stay with you long after the credits roll. Uncharted 4 A Thief's End 
Alright, Uncharted 4, man, where do I even start? If you love treasure hunts, crazy action, and storylines that hit hard, then this one is the game you need to dive into. Honestly, I still can't believe how good this game looks on a PS4, like I'd put its visuals up against most PS5 titles without a second thought. So here's the deal you play as Nathan Drake, but this time it's different, he's older, retired, and trying to live that normal life with Elena though you can tell that man misses the chaos. Then, boom his long lost brother Sam shows up with a wild story about a lost pirate treasure. And just like that, Nate's pulled right back into the life he swore he left behind. The way the story plays out feels so natural like you're catching up with old friends who've grown and changed but still have that spark. And the set pieces? Man, Uncharted 4 is loaded with those jaw dropping, controller squeezing moments. Like one minute you're climbing a mountain, and the next you're in a high speed chase, swinging on ropes between moving vehicles. That car chase scene through the streets of Madagascar? Insane. I had to pause the game just to catch my breath after that one, and climbing around on a sinking shipwreck or sneaking through old pirate hideouts. Yeah, it's the kind of stuff that makes you feel like a total badass. What's crazy is that they didn't just double down on action. The pacing is perfect they know when to slow things down and let you explore or solve puzzles. Those quiet moments like just walking through Nate's attic, filled with little trinkets from his past adventures. That stuff hit me right in the feels. It's a game that knows how to make you care about its characters. Not just the explosions and gunfights though, there are plenty of those too, don't worry. If you haven't played this one yet, do yourself a favor and pick it up. It's a perfect send off for Nate's story though, I won't lie. I kinda hope they bring him back one day, but even if they don't, this is the kind of game that'll stay with you. It's got heart, it's got action, and it's just a damn good time. Seriously, Uncharted 4 is the PS4 at its absolute best. If this was the last game I ever played on the system, I wouldn't even be mad. Bloodborne. Bloodborne is straight up one of the most unforgettable gaming experiences out there. If you've never played it, let me tell you it's not just a game, it's a journey through some of the most twisted, beautiful nightmares you'll ever see. From the second you wake up in Yaharnam, you know you're in for something different, this game throws you into a dark, gothic world with grotesque monsters, eerie villages, and a constant feeling that something is really wrong, but you can't quite figure out what. The gameplay is brutal but fair. It forces you to be aggressive, none of that hiding behind shields like in other Souls games. You're given a weapon in one hand and a gun in the other, and the only way to survive is to keep moving, dodging, and striking at just the right moment. Every encounter feels like a battle of wits where patience and timing are everything, but yeah, expect to die a lot, and weirdly that's part of the fun. It's frustrating in a way that makes you want to jump back in and try again until you finally overcome whatever monstrosity was blocking your way. When you land that perfect dodge or take down a boss that's been kicking your ass for hours, it's so satisfying. Speaking of bosses, these are some of the most insane designs I've ever seen. They range from giant beasts to unsettling, humanoid horrors that seem pulled right out of someone's worst nightmare. Each fight feels like a test, and it's not just about skill, it's about figuring out their patterns, learning how to react, and adapting when they suddenly pull out some wild new attack halfway through. The vibe of this game is something else, it's not just the creepy creatures, it's the whole world. Kiharnam feels alive in the worst way possible, like the entire city is cursed and everything in it knows you don't belong there. And the twisted architecture, the haunting music, the way NPCs speak and cryptic riddles it all combines to create this unsettling atmosphere that sticks with you even after you stop playing. And the deeper you go into the game, the weirder things get. What starts as a hunt for beast spirals into something much bigger and way more unsettling, no spoilers, but trust me things go from okay, this is messed up to what the hell did I just walk into real quick. If you love games that make you think and reward you for sticking with them, Bloodborne is a must play. It's tough, no doubt, but it never feels unfair. Every death teaches you something new, 
and every victory feels earned. And honestly, even if you're not into tough games, the atmosphere and world building alone are worth experiencing. This is one of those games that sticks with you. It's not just about the combat or the bosses. It's about the mood, the mystery, and the way it makes you feel like you're constantly on the edge of discovering something horrifying and brilliant. Even now, years later, Bloodborne holds up against pretty much anything on the PS5. It's a PS4 classic that deserves to be experienced, even if it drives you a little insane along the way. God of War 2018 Man, God of War 2018 is on a whole other level. This isn't just another action game, it's a complete reinvention of a legendary series. If you were used to the old school, rage-filled Kratos who tore through gods and monsters without a second thought, get ready for a very different, more mature take on his character. This time it's not just about swinging blades and smashing heads, it's about being a dad, and somehow, that makes the journey hit even harder. The story follows Kratos and his son, Atreus, as they travel across a Norse and inspired world to scatter the ashes of Kratos' late wife from the highest peak. It sounds simple, right? But the way the relationship between these two evolves as they face gods, monsters, and their own emotional baggage makes it unforgettable. Kratos is struggling not just against enemies, but against himself trying to be a better father than what he had. And Atreus, he's just a kid, but he's thrown into situations way over his head, learning not only how to fight, but how to understand the man his father used to be. Gameplay-wise, God of War is ridiculously smooth. The Leviathan Axe? It's honestly one of the most satisfying weapons ever put in a game. Throwing it at an enemy, recalling it back to your hand, and hearing that heavy thunk it just never gets old. And the combat isn't just mindless button mashing either, it's all about timing, positioning, and using Atreus to support you mid-fight. The game constantly throws new challenges at you, and every enemy encounter feels intense, whether it's a simple troll or one of those insane Valkyrie fights. What's crazy is how seamless the whole game feels. There are no loading screens, no cutaway moments, it's all one continuous shot. It's like you're right there with Kratos and Atreus the whole time, living through every battle, every quiet conversation, every breathtaking vista. And yeah, this game is gorgeous, the world feels massive and alive, filled with forests, snowy peaks, ancient ruins, and jaw-dropping creatures straight out of mythology. Even if you've never touched the older God of War games, this one stands on its own perfectly. It's not just a great game, it's one of the best experiences on the PS4. And even though it's got a sequel now on the PS5, this entry still holds its ground. If you haven't played it yet, do yourself a favor and dive in. It's got heart, action, and enough jaw-dropping moments to keep you hooked from start to finish. Marvel's Spider-Man Spider-Man is just pure joy from start to finish. I don't even know how they nailed it this hard, but Insomniac really made you feel like Spider-Man. I'm talking about that first time you jump off a skyscraper web sling through New York and feel the wind rushing past. The movement is so smooth. You don't just press buttons, you flow through the city, zipping between buildings, doing flips midair, and catching yourself just before hitting the ground. Honestly, it's almost therapeutic. You could spend hours just swinging around without even touching the main missions and it would still feel worth it. The game isn't just about swinging around though. The combat is tight and feels exactly how you'd want Spider-Man to fight quick, agile, and creative. It's all about dodging attacks, flipping over enemies, webbing them up, and using your environment to your advantage. And when you get into the flow, stringing together combos and pulling off cool takedowns, yeah, it's as good as it sounds, there's also a whole skill tree and gadgets to mess around with, so the combat never really gets stale. By the way, this game has some of the best villains. You've got classic ones like Kingpin and Shocker, and then there's the bigger emotional stuff with Doc Ock and Mr. Negative. The way the story builds up to those moments is is so satisfying it's not just bad guy shows up and you fight him. There's actual tension and emotional weight behind those encounters which makes every battle feel personal. And the world.
Dude, it's New York City done right. It's packed with details, random conversations on the streets, people reacting to you swinging by, photo ops, side quests, and little Easter eggs scattered all over. It makes you want to explore every corner, plus the weather changes and day-night cycle just add to the vibe. There's nothing quite like swinging around Times Square at night with all the neon signs glowing. Even though it's a PS4 game, it still holds up perfectly today. The graphics, the combat, the story, it's all just as good now as it was when it first came out. If you've somehow missed out on this one, there's no better time to jump in. This game will remind you why Spider-Man is such a beloved hero, and trust me, it's one hell of a ride from start to finish. Red Dead Redemption 2 Alright, so Red Dead Redemption 2 is a game that just pulls you in and doesn't let go. This isn't one of those games you blast through in a weekend, it's slow, detailed, and really makes you feel like you're living in the Wild West. You play as Arthur Morgan, an outlaw trying to hold his life together while the gang he's been with forever starts falling apart. It's not just about robbing banks or having shootouts, though Arthur's story hits way deeper than that. The thing about this game is, it's not in a rush, and that's what makes it special. Riding across the plains at sunset camping out under the stars or just listening to the other gang members talk around the fire those quiet moments are what make it feel real and the world it's ridiculous how alive it feels you'll be riding along and stumble into the most random encounters like a guy bitten by a snake who needs help or some weirdo building a robot out in the woods it's stuff like that that makes it feel like more than just missions and checkpoints the characters are what stick with you the most though. Arthur isn't just some angry outlaw, he's complicated. You see him wrestle with the choices he's made, trying to figure out if he can still do some good in a life full of bad decisions. And the way the game handles his relationships, especially with Dutch and John, is so well done. It's like watching a slow motion train wreck, you know things are going to go south, but you can't stop hoping it'll somehow turn out okay. Honestly, this game isn't for everyone. If you're into fast-paced action, it might feel a little slow at times, but if you're down for an immersive experience that lets you soak in the details and really get attached to the characters, there's nothing like it. It's not just a game, it feels like an entire world you're stepping into. If you haven't played it yet, you're missing out on one of the best things the PS4 has to offer. It is us or him. Shadow of the Colossus Remake Shadow of the Colossus is one of those games that makes you feel something you can't quite put into words. It's simple, there are no side quests, no big loot drops, no filler. It's just you, your horse, and 16 giant colossi that stand between you and the hope of saving someone you care about. The remake on PS4 took everything that made the original special and gave it a fresh coat of paint without messing with what made it so good in the first place. The vibe of this game is unreal. You're dropped into this quiet, empty world that feels both beautiful and lonely. No towns, no NPCs, just ancient ruins, wide open fields, and these massive creatures that seem more like living mountains than enemies. It feels like you shouldn't even be fighting them, like you're crossing some moral line by just being there. And that's part of what makes it hit so hard each Colossus isn't just a boss fight. There's this weird sense of guilt every time you bring one down. The gameplay is straightforward but intense. You're given a sword, a bow, and your horse aggro, and the game just says, go find these giants and figure out how to bring them down. Each Colossus is a puzzle climbing up their bodies, looking for weak points, and hanging on for dear life while they try to shake you off. It's not just about quick reflexes, but figuring out how to beat them. Every fight feels like its own story, with some taking place in open fields and others deep in dark caves or under the water. And Agro, your horse deserves a special mention. The bond between you and that horse feels real. She's not just a vehicle to get you from A to B. She has a personality and moments where she stumbles or struggles make her feel alive. By the end of the game, you'll feel like you've been through everything together. What's wild is how this remake manages to feel so modern while keeping the soul of the original intact. 
The visuals are stunning those sweeping landscapes, the soft lighting, and the massive scale of the Colossi will have you pausing just to take it all in. Even though the gameplay hasn't changed much, it feels smoother, like it was meant to be played this way all along. This isn't the kind of game you play for fast action or constant rewards, it's about the experience, the atmosphere, and the emotional weight of what you're doing. If you haven't played it yet, the PS4 remake is the perfect way to experience it. It's not just a game you finish, it's one you remember. Rise of the Tomb Raider Rise of the Tomb Raider is one of those games that just nails that perfect blend of exploration, action, and adventure. You're back in the boots of Lara Croft, and this time she's searching for the secret to immortality in the lost city of Kitchis. The story takes you through icy mountains, ancient ruins, and creepy tombs, all while dealing with mercenaries from a shadowy organization called Trinity. It's a classic treasure hunt with just the right amount of danger lurking at every corner. What really stands out in this game is how good it feels to explore. The world is packed with hidden tombs caves, and puzzles that are actually fun to solve. It rewards you for going off the beaten path with upgrades and collectibles that don't feel like pointless busy work. And the tombs in particular are some of the best parts. They're spooky, atmospheric, and filled with clever environmental puzzles that make you feel like an actual archaeologist. The combat is a nice mix of stealth and action. You can sneak around with your bow, setting traps and taking out enemies quietly, or just go full guns blazing if that's your style. I always found myself trying to stay sneaky, but there's something satisfying about switching things up mid-fight and going wild with Lara's arsenal. The game gives you a lot of options for how to approach situations so it never feels like you're stuck doing the same thing over and over. And man, the visuals still hold up. This game looked amazing on PS4, with beautiful snow-covered landscapes, dense forests, and ancient ruins that feel massive and lived in. The way Lara reacts to the cold like shivering or warming her hands by fire just adds to the immersion. It's those little details that make it feel like more than just a video game world. If you're into action-adventure games with a good mix of puzzles, exploration, and combat, Rise of the Tomb Raider is a must-play. It's got that perfect just one more tomb vibe that keeps you coming back, and even though it's a PS4 game, it still feels fresh today. Definitely one to add to the list if you haven't already. The Witcher 3. Alright, The Witcher 3 is the kind of game that ruins other RPGs for you. Once you play it, good luck finding another game that pulls off world building and storytelling this well. You step into the boots of Geralt of Rivia, a monster hunter who's just trying to track down his adoptive daughter, Ciri, while dealing with an apocalyptic threat called the Wild Hunt. But honestly, the main story is just the tip of the iceberg. What makes this game incredible is everything else going on around you. The world feels massive, but not in a way that overwhelms you. Every village, forest, and city has a story to tell. One minute, you're helping a farmer with a monster problem the next, you're caught in the middle of some political conspiracy you didn't ask to be part of. And the side quests, they're on a whole different level. These aren't just fetch quests, they're full-on mini-stories with twists, emotional weight, and sometimes decisions that hit harder than anything in the main plot. You can go off looking for a missing person and somehow end up tangled in an ancient curse you didn't see coming. The combat is fun once you get the hang of it, but it can feel a bit tricky at first. You've got a mixed sword play, signs which are basically magical abilities, and potions to survive. And the monsters. They are just cannon fodder, each one has weaknesses you need to learn if you want to stand a chance. It's not just swing sword, win fight you've got to actually prepare, like reading bestiaries to figure out what you're up against. But honestly, what really makes the game stand out is how it handles choice. The decisions you make aren't black and white most of the time, you'll pick between bad and worse. And you don't always know the consequences right away sometimes. Hours later, you'll realize that choice you made in a random conversation totally changed the course of the story. It makes everything feel personal, like this version of Geralt's story is truly yours. And let's not forget about the world itself. 
The landscapes are breathtaking from the bustling streets of Novigrad to the eerie, fog-covered swamps of Velen. There's always something to explore, and the soundtrack just pulls you in even deeper. Riding Roach across the countryside while that haunting music plays in the background, it's a vibe. Infamous Second Son. Alright, Infamous Second Son is one of those games that's just plain fun. You play as Delson Rowe, a young, cocky dude from Seattle who discovers he's got some crazy powers. And not just any powers, this guy can absorb other people's abilities. The game kicks off with Delson realizing he's a conduit, basically someone with superpowers, and from that point on, it's all about mastering those abilities while trying to figure out if you want to be the hero the city needs or the villain it fears. The gameplay is where this game really shines. Running around Seattle feels amazing whether you're sprinting up buildings using neon powers or flying across rooftops in a cloud of smoke, the movement just flows. It's one of those games where getting from point A to point B is half the fun, and once you unlock new abilities, it's even better. The game doesn't just hand you one power and call it a day, you eventually absorb different ones like neon, smoke, and even video, yeah video, and each one feels totally unique. What's cool is how the game gives you choices. Every time you interact with the world, whether it's helping people or causing chaos, it shifts Delson's morality. If you go the hero out, you'll unlock more precise, non-lethal abilities. But if you lean into the villain side, your powers become more destructive. And yeah, the world reacts to you, start doing evil stuff, and people will run from you in fear. Stick to the good path and they'll cheer you on. It's a small thing, but it really makes you feel connected to what's happening around you. And the city of Seattle? It's one of the better open worlds out there. It's not the biggest map, but it feels alive rain-soaked streets, graffiti-covered walls, and little pockets of activity everywhere you go. It's the kind of place you want to explore just for the hell of it, even if you're not chasing down side missions. Plus, the visuals still look great even today. That neon glow. Gorgeous. If you're into open world games with smooth movement and badass powers, Infamous Second Son is worth a shot. It might not be as deep or complex as some other games, but it's got a charm of its own. Sometimes you just want to blow stuff up with superpowers, and this game delivers that in the best way. Batman Arkham Knight if you ever wanted to feel exactly like Batman, Arkham Knight delivers that fantasy perfectly. This game lets you glide across Gotham's skyline, take down thugs in brutal combat, and outthink villains with detective work that makes you feel like the world's greatest detective. It's everything you'd want from a Batman game packed into one massive rain-soaked open world. So the story picks up right after Arkham City and it's dark, like really dark. Scarecrow is back and threatening to cover Gotham in fear toxin, forcing the whole city to evacuate. With no civilians around, the streets are packed with criminals, tanks, and familiar faces from Batman's rogue gallery. And then there's the Arkham Knight, a mysterious new villain with a grudge against Batman who makes things personal. The plot pulls you in, especially if you've been following the Arkham series from the start, it's filled with twists, emotional moments, and a deep dive into Batman's psyche. Combat is as smooth and satisfying as ever. It's all about countering attacks, chaining combos, and using gadgets mid-fight. There's this flow to the fighting that feels just right taking down a room full of enemies without getting hit makes you feel unstoppable. But what really spices things up this time is the Batmobile. Yeah, you finally get to drive it, and it's not just a gimmick, it's a huge part of the gameplay. You'll use it for high-speed chases, puzzles, and even in combat as it transforms into a tank. Some people felt the Batmobile sections were overdone, but honestly I had a blast with them. Blasting drones with that 60mm cannon never gets old. Gotham itself is a highlight. The city is massive, with so many details crammed into every corner. You'll find easter eggs from other DC heroes and villains hidden all over, making exploration feel rewarding. Plus the weather effects, like the constant rain and lightning, add to the whole gritty atmosphere. It's the perfect playground for Batman. This game wraps up Batman's story in the Arkham series in a way that's both satisfying and emotional. It digs deep into what makes Batman who he is, his trauma, his obsession with justice, and how those things push him to the edge. If you've followed his journey through the other Arkham games, the ending will hit hard.
Final Fantasy VII Remake. Final Fantasy VII Remake isn't just a nostalgia trip, it's a whole new way to experience a classic. If you've played the original, you already know the story Cloud Strife, a brooding mercenary with a mysterious past, teams up with eco-terrorists to take down a corrupt corporation called Shinra. But here's the thing, the remake doesn't just rehash the same old plot, it expands on everything, giving more depth to the world, the characters, and the events in Midgar. The combat is where things get interesting, it's this perfect blend of real-time action and strategy. You're slashing away as Cloud with quick attacks, but when things get tough, you can slow down time to plan your next move, use abilities, or cast spells. It's the best of both worlds, fast-paced enough to keep you engage but with just enough depth to make you think, and swapping between characters mid-battle keeps things fresh. Each character has their own style, Tifa's quick and punchy, Barret's your tank with a giant gun arm, and Aerith plays like a long-range magic user. What really caught me off guard was how much love they put into fleshing out Midgar. In the original game, Midgar was just the prologue, but here it's the entire game. Every part of the city feels alive from the crowded slums to the neon-lit upper levels. You get to spend more time with the side characters, and Suddenly people like Jesse Biggs and Wedge are real characters you care about, not just side notes. There's a much bigger threat. I just want to do everything in my power to help. Now, fair warning this game isn't the complete Final Fantasy VII story, it's part one of a bigger series, and it only covers the Midgar section of the original. But even knowing that, it still feels like a full experience, with enough twists and surprises to keep veterans and newcomers hooked. If you haven't played it yet, Final Fantasy VII Remake is absolutely worth your time. Whether you're a longtime fan of the original or just looking for a great RPG with an emotional story and fantastic gameplay, this one delivers. Before we continue the video, huge thanks to Instant Gaming for sponsoring today's video. If you're looking to grab top games at killer prices, you need to check them out. I was just browsing their site and their trending page is loaded with the hottest games across all platforms, PC, PlayStation, you name it. What I love most is that all the games come directly from official sources so it's totally legit. And if you're looking ahead, their pre-orders section has you covered for upcoming releases. Oh, and don't forget to check out their Trustpilot reviews, they've got a great reputation. It's honestly one of the best spots to get your favorite games for less. Days Gone. Days Gone is one of those games that people didn't appreciate enough when it first dropped, but man, it's got a lot to offer if you give it a chance. It's an open world survival game set in a post-apocalyptic Oregon, where you play as Deacon St. John, a biker turned drifter just trying to survive. What sets this one apart is how it combines two things you wouldn't expect to work together, the freedom of a biker lifestyle and the tension of surviving in a world crawling with zombies or freakers as they call them. What I really liked about this game is the vibe. The world isn't just some generic apocalypse, it feels rugged and lived in, you'll ride through forests, snowy mountains, and abandoned towns, and the dynamic weather makes everything feel even more immersive. Nothing like riding your bike through a rainstorm only to have it break down, forcing you to scavenge for parts while knowing freakers could be lurking nearby. The bike isn't just a vehicle, it's your lifeline. You have to fuel it, repair it, and customize it, which gives the whole game a bit of a survival edge. The gameplay is a mix of action, stealth, and survival. You'll sneak through freaker nests, set traps, and engage in brutal firefights with human enemies from rival camps. But the real highlight, the Freaker Hordes. Imagine hundreds of these things swarming at you all at once, there's nothing quite like the panic of running out of ammo while a wall of Freakers comes charging. Taking down a horde feels like a huge accomplishment, and it's not just about shooting, it's about using the environment, planning your escape routes, and thinking on your feet. It's not a perfect game, there are a few rough edges, and the pacing might feel a bit slow at times, but if you're into open world games with a focus on story and survival, Days Gone has a lot going for it. The post-apocalyptic world feels raw and dangerous, and the characters grow on you as the story unfolds. If you skipped it back when it launched, now's the perfect time to give it a go. It's one of those games that gets better the more time you spend with it, and by the end you'll be glad you stuck around. Persona 5. 
Persona 5 isn't just a game, it's an experience, and one that'll probably take over your life for a good while. It's a massive JRPG where you live the double life of a high school student and a masked vigilante. By day, you're balancing schoolwork, friendships, and part-time jobs. By night, you're diving into the metaverse to change the hearts of corrupt adults as part of the Phantom Thieves. It sounds a bit wild, and yeah, it is, but that's what makes it so damn special. The coolest part is how seamlessly it blends these two sides of gameplay. One moment you're hanging out with your friends at a cafe or studying for exams, and the next you're sneaking through surreal dungeons and pulling off stylish heists. And the crazy thing is both parts feel equally important. Strengthening your friendships called confidants isn't just fluff it unlocks powerful abilities that help you in combat. Everything you do during your daily life ties back into your Phantom Thieves activities, which makes every decision feel meaningful. The combat is turn-based, but it's fast and satisfying. You collect and summon personas kind of like supernatural alter egos with different abilities, and figuring out enemy weaknesses plays a huge role in battles. The fights feel slick thanks to the over-the-top animations and that jazzy soundtrack that never gets old. Pulling off an all-out attack and watching your team finish the fight in a burst of color is just chef's kiss. And let's talk about that style this game oozes personality. Everything from the menu design to the character animations has this sleek, vibrant energy. It's got this rebellious vibe that perfectly matches the story, which revolves around calling out and reforming corrupt people in positions of power. It's not afraid to get heavy with the themes, either bullying, abuse, and societal pressure all tackled head on. But somehow, the game balances all that seriousness with moments of pure fun. Now, Persona 5 is long. We're talking 100 hours easy, and that's if you're not trying to max out every confidant and see all the extra stuff. But the pacing is great just when things start to feel a little too normal. The game throws you a curveball, keeping you hooked all the way to the end. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is the kind of game that demands your respect. If you thought Dark Souls was hard, this one takes it to a whole new level. It's not just about hacking and slashing your way through enemies Sekiro wants you to fight with precision, patience, and timing. Every encounter, even with the most basic enemies, feels like a duel where one mistake can send you back to the last checkpoint, but the thing is, once you get the rhythm down, the combat feels absolutely incredible. You play as Wolf a shinobi on a mission to rescue his kidnap master and take down anyone standing in his way. The story is a lot more straightforward than From Software's other games, but it's still full of mysteries and hidden lore if you dig for it. The real star here though is the combat, it's all about parrying, dodging, and striking at just the right moment. You've got a sword, some shinobi tools, and a grappling hook, but the real skill comes down to mastering the art of deflecting attacks. The game doesn't let you button mash your way to victory. Every enemy has a posture meter, and the goal isn't to whittle down their health, it's to break their posture so you can land a killing blow. At first, it feels brutal because you'll die over and over and over, but the moment it clicks, it's pure magic. You go from getting wrecked by a mini-boss to parrying every hit and delivering perfect counterattacks. And let me tell you, there's nothing more satisfying than nailing a fight that gave you trouble for hours. The boss fights in Sekiro are legendary. These aren't just tough enemies, they're epic encounters that will push you to your limit. Some of them, like Jinichiro or the Guardian Ape, will absolutely test your patience, but that makes beating them feel like a real achievement. Uh, it's not just skill, you have to learn their patterns, stay calm, and react quickly. These fights can be frustrating, but the payoff is worth it every time. What's cool is how Sekiro rewards exploration, the world is packed with hidden areas, shortcuts, and upgrades that make a big difference in how you approach fights. Using your grappling hook to swing across rooftops and find secret paths gives you that awesome ninja vibe, and the verticality adds a new layer to how you navigate the world. The world itself is beautiful in a dark and eerie way. From snowy mountains to cursed forests, every area has its own vibe, and the atmosphere is thick with tension. Even when you're not in combat, you're always on edge, wondering what's lurking around the next corner. It might not be for everyone, but if you're looking for a challenge and love the idea of mastering fast, precise combat, Sekiro is an absolute must-play. Just prepare yourself, it's not going to go easy on you.
No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky has one of the wildest comeback stories in gaming. When it first launched, it didn't live up to the massive expectations, but today, it's like a completely different game. The developers at Hello Games stuck with it, and now it's one of the most ambitious, relaxing, and downright fun space exploration games you can play. At its core, No Man's Sky is all about discovery. You start on a random planet with a busted ship and barely any supplies, and from there, it's up to you how you want to play. You can focus on fixing your ship and flying off into space, or take your time exploring the weird and colorful world around you. The beauty of the game is that it doesn't rush you whether you're scanning alien creatures, building a base, or just cruising through asteroid fields, it's all on your terms. The sheer scale of it is mind-blowing, there are literally billions of procedurally generated planets to explore, each with its own creatures, weather, and landscape. One moment you'll be walking through a lush jungle filled with strange alien animals, and the next you're on a barren planet with storms so brutal you have to take shelter or get cooked alive. And the coolest part, every player has their own journey. The odds of someone else landing on the same random planet as you are slim, making each experience feel personal. The game's updates over the years have been insane. What started as a solo exploration game now has full multiplayer, base building, massive space freighters, underwater exploration, and even full-on expeditions where you team up with others. There's also a story now nothing too in your face, but it adds some purpose to all the wandering. It's got a mysterious vibe with ancient alien ruins, weird artifacts, and lore hidden across the universe giving you just enough reason to keep exploring. Flying your ship around is also a blast. Taking off from a planet, seamlessly flying into space, and landing on a space station or another planet without any loading screens still feels crazy good. And the sense of freedom is unmatched, you can upgrade your ship, build massive bases, or just wander from planet to planet without any real objective. It's not a game that holds your hand, but that's part of what makes it so special. If you like games that let you relax and do your own thing, No Man's Sky is perfect. It's not the kind of game that forces you into constant action. Instead, it's about chilling out, exploring the unknown, and building whatever crazy base or spaceship you can dream of. And the updates keep coming, so there's always something new to check out. It Dishonored 2. Dishonored 2 is one of those games where everything just clicks stealth, action, exploration, and freedom to play exactly how you want. It puts you in control of either Corvo Atano or Emily Caldwin, each with their own unique abilities, and drops you into a beautifully crafted world filled with corruption, mystery, and betrayal. Whether you want to sneak through every level like a shadow or go lab with all your powers blazing, this game gives you the tools to make it happen. The story is a direct follow-up to the first Dishonored, but it's easy easy to jump into even if you miss the original. Emily's lost her throne thanks to a ruthless coup, and now it's up to you playing as either her or Corvo to take it back. What makes the story so engaging is that it doesn't force any one path on you. You can be a merciful ruler or an unstoppable assassin, it all depends on how you handle situations, and the game will react to your choices. What makes Dishonored 2 stand out is the level design. Every environment is a sandbox with endless possibilities. Take the Clockwork Mansion for example, it's this crazy shifting building where walls and floors move around as you explore. Or the Crack in the Slab mission, where you jump between two points in time to solve puzzles puzzles and sneak past enemies. These levels aren't just cool to look at, they're designed to let you experiment. You're not just figuring out how to get from point A to B, you're deciding how you want to approach every situation. And the abilities? So much fun. Corvo returns with his trusty blink ability, letting him teleport short distances while Emily brings some new tricks like Domino where you link enemies together so they share the same fate take down one, and the rest go down too. Every power encourages creativity, and you can even disable them entirely if you want to push your stealth skills to the limit. The combat and stealth are super flexible. If you get caught sneaking, you can fight your way out or just escape into the shadows. The AI is smart, though enemies will call for backup, search for you, and won't fall for the same trick twice. 
It keeps things tense, but never frustrating. The game's world, Karnaka, is stunning. It's this crumbling coastal city inspired by Mediterranean architecture full of narrow alleys, sunlit plazas, and secrets tucked away in every corner. It's a place you'll want to explore not just for the missions, but for the hidden stories told through notes, conversations, and environmental details. If you like games that reward creativity and let you approach challenges your own way, Dishonored 2 is a must-play. It's not just about sneaking or fighting, it's about the freedom to choose how you'll carve your path through a world that feels alive and reactive, and once you finish it, you'll probably find yourself itching to start all over again. Far Cry 5 Far Cry 5 throws you right into the deep end of chaos. You're a rookie deputy sent to a remote part of Montana, and things go off the rails fast. The area's been taken over by a doomsday cult called Eden's Gate, led by Joseph Seed, a super creepy, charismatic leader. Your job? Take down the Seed family and free the region, but of course nothing is ever that simple. The whole game plays like a wild backwoods action movie with a side of unpredictability. One of the coolest things about Far Cry 5 is the freedom it gives you. Right from the start, you can go wherever you want, there's no strict order to follow. The map is broken into three regions, each controlled by one of Joseph's siblings, and how you tackle them is totally up to you. Want to sneak around and take out cult members quietly? Go for it. Prefer strapping C4 to a truck and ramming it into a checkpoint? That works too. It's chaotic, unpredictable, and gives you endless ways to cause mayhem. The open world feels alive and dynamic. You'll be driving down a dirt road when out of nowhere, a firefight will break out between cultists and local resistance fighters. Or you'll find yourself ambushed by a bear because Montana is wild. There's always something happening, and it keeps the game feeling exciting, even when you're just wandering around. The gunplay feels tight and satisfying, and the game gives you a ton of options to mess around with. You've got shotguns, bows, flamethrowers, and even fishing rods, because why not? And let's not forget the companions, one of the best parts. You can recruit a team of allies, including a sniper, a pilot, or even Boomer, a dog that takes down enemies and brings you their weapons. Having these companions around makes things way more fun, and each one brings a unique edge to your playstyle. The story is where things get really interesting, it's not your typical save the day plot. The seeds genuinely believe they're saving the world, and the way the game explores themes of control, faith, and freedom adds a layer of depth that you wouldn't expect from a game like this. And Joseph Seed? Easily one of the best villains in the series he's unsettling because in his own twisted way, he thinks he's doing the right thing. And let's not forget the co-op mode. The entire campaign can be played with a friend and causing chaos with a buddy just makes the game even better. Whether you're flying planes, liberating outposts, or fishing for that legendary base, everything's more fun with two people. Just Cause 3. Just Cause 3 is all about mayhem. This game isn't here to give you a deep story or emotional moments, it's here to let you blow up everything in sight and make you feel like a total badass while doing it. You play as Rico Rodriguez returning to his homeland of Medici to take down a dictator, but honestly, the plot's just background noise, what really matters is how much stuff you can destroy along the way. The first thing you'll notice is how free the game makes you feel. Rico's grapple hook, parachute, and wingsuit combo pretty much mean you never have to touch the ground if you don't want to. You can grab Apple from one spot to another, launch yourself into the air, switch to the parachute, then dive into a wingsuit flight. It's like mastering a wild stunt routine. Once you get the hang of it, you'll spend more time flying around than driving or running. And let's talk about the destruction, it's chef's kiss. You're not just blowing up tanks and fuel depots for the hell of it though, let's be real. That's a huge part of the fun. The game actively encourages you to cause as much chaos as possible. You can tether objects together with your grapple hook, so if you ever wondered what happens when you attach a helicopter to an oil tank, well now's your chance to find out. There's something so satisfying about setting off a chain reaction of explosions and watching an entire military base crumble around you. 
Medici itself is beautiful. It's this massive open world filled with beaches, mountains, towns, and enemy bases. And it's not just for show, it's a playground built for destruction. Everywhere you go, there's something to blow up, something to tether together, or a new stunt to try. The game never really punishes you for messing around either. It wants you to experiment and have fun. This isn't the kind of game you play for a gripping story or serious challenge. It's the kind of game you jump into when you just want to blow off some steam. It's fun over the top and ridiculous in the best way, if you're in the mood for some mindless chaos with endless opportunities for ridiculous stunts, Just Cause 3 will have you hooked. Well, everyone, that was all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, please make sure to leave a like and also tell me what more PS4 gems would you add to this list. Now, I will see you later. Have a good day. Demo Fruit Smash.